Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Right next door to me is Dr. Philip Levesque, past co-host on the show. Hey, doctor. And then Casper Leach is right there in between us, back a step. Over in the wings is Mr. John Cornett, ready to bring us some wonderful music. We have uh, lots of hemp news for the past couple of weeks, actually, and uh, lots of video clips. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. <laughs> out of our nation's capital in a historic vote the U.S. House on Wednesday passed a bipartisan amendment by representatives Denny Hick, Democrat from Washington, Ed Perlmutter, a Democrat from Colorado, Barbara Lee from California, and Dana Rohrbacher, California. This new law prevents the Treasury Department from spending any funding to penalize financial institutions that provide services to marijuana businesses that are legal under state law. The amendment passed 231 to 192. In May, the U.S. House passed an amendment prohibiting the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, from undermining state medical marijuana laws and passed two amendments prohibiting the DEA from interfering with state hemp laws. Uh, Congress is yet again rejecting the failed war on drugs. They have read the poll numbers and are doing both what is right and what is politically smart. A recent Pew Research Center survey found that nearly three of every four Americans, or 72 percent, believe that efforts to enforce marijuana laws cost more than they are worth. Right across the river from us here in Portland, Oregon, Seattle's only state licensed marijuana store closed quickly after running out of cannabis last week in its first few days of business. Plans to reopen again late next week. They say they will open again on the 25th with enough product to remain open with continuous supplies from their own, according to Cannabis City Manager, the, the store is called Cannabis City, the manager's Amber Gowen. Cannabis City was the first marijuana shop in Seattle to open on July 8th and made it just three days before running out of cannabis. The Gowan said the store is waiting until the 25th to reopen so that they can actually stay open for business instead of closing and reopening every few days. He says by the 25th, quote, we expect to have two consistent large volume suppliers on board with a third a few days later. And with that, then we hope to be able to conduct a more normal type of business operation with no future closures. That's the plan at least, end quote. The shop will only have ready to smoke marijuana flowers for sale this month. The Gowan said they plan to have cannabis oil and vaporization pins in August. Two other marijuana stores are almost ready to open in Seattle, according to the Washington State Liquor Control Board, which was put in charge of implementing limited legalization measure I-502 in the state of Washington. Here in Oregon, agriculture officials in Oregon have for months now been working on rules for industrial hemp production with the goal of having them finished in time for a spring 2015 planning. But one man here from Portland doesn't want to wait. Rick Rutherford, who's 47, has some land in Dufer and he doesn't want to wait. Uh, Rutherford, who uh, said he big, sees big potential for industrial hemp, last week sent an application to the Oregon State Department of Agriculture requesting permission to grow hemp on his land in Wasco County. Courtney Moran, a Portland lawyer who's appeared here on this show, in a letter accompanying Rutherford's application wrote, quote, time is of the essence as planting seeds need to be underway within the next couple of weeks to conduct a viable outdoor research pilot program in Oregon, end quote. 
Rutherford said, however, I think it will be kind of fun to do. I've been itching to do this for a long time, end quote. State officials on Thursday said they aren't ready to start issuing hemp licensing. Uh, the rule writing process has been torturously slow as officials labor of li on licensing fees and processing rules. Of course, uh, if we want to make hemp fiber cheap as it should be, we shouldn't have that many rules and we shouldn't have any fees. The uh, United States Farm Bill approved by Congress earlier this year allows the states where industrial hemp is legal under state law, including Oregon, to permit pr hemp production by universities and state agricultural departments. 16 states allow cultivation, but Kentucky is the only state that is currently cultivating hemp for fiber. Uh, Oregon State University, which supposedly would be the best research facility in the state of Oregon to grow hemp, isn't interested, and the state agricultural department officials claim the agency lacks the land and expertise in hemp production. Rutherford's asking the state to designate him as an extension of the Department of Agriculture, which would allow him to cultivate hemp under the Farm Bill. He said he wants to learn which type of hemp grows best here in Oregon. Across the, it, well, over in Washington, D.C., uh, the, the federal capital, they have implemented decriminalization of marijuana this week. So people will be getting tickets like they do in Oregon and North Carolina and several other states. However, uh, Republicans in Congress are trying to block that, but they haven't been successful yet. In Malaysia, a very sad story, a Nigerian college student was sentenced to death for trafficking about 60 pounds of cannabis. Uh, he was arrested four years ago. Uh, Malaysian High Court Judge Datan T. Hong Guk Abdullah today sentenced uh, Yuchik Nelson Ochesi, 37, from Nigeria to be hanged for trafficking cannabis. The prosecution conducted by Deputy Pub Prosecutor uh, Vic Nassarin had called seven witnesses to testify while the Nigerian student was the sole witness who testified for the defense. Now, Malaysia's had two planes they've lost in the past five months, one disappearing at sea, one shot down over the Ukraine, and they continue to execute marijuana uh, people. Anyone over, holding over 200 grams of marijuana in Malaysia will be sentenced to death, and they are hung the day after they are sentenced to death. I urge everyone out there to boycott Malaysia. Don't travel there. Don't buy anything from there. And contact the Malaysian consulate and urge them to stop executing people for cannabis. And just point out that uh, you can't even keep your planes in the air. Maybe uh, uh, you need to change a few things. Well, over in the Midwest, the unthinkables happened in Iowa where a dying cancer patient, along with his wife and son, have been convicted for growing marijuana. Benton McKenzie, 48, faces a probable prison sentence after his Wednesday conviction on jar drug charges, which he views as a death sentence. He said, quote, I knew what they were going to do, McKenzie said, as his wife pushed him in a wheelchair, leaving the courthouse. Uh, the unbelievable guilty verdict on four felony drug charges was delivered by Scott County jurors McKenzie's wife and son were also convicted alongside him. Uh, McKenzie had traveled here to Oregon and received a medical marijuana permit. He has these huge, painful tumors, even the size of a grapefruit, on his body. And he's been using cannabis oil to try to uh, stop those and cure that. And he's lived four years longer than they told him he was going to originally. We at THCF Medical... Uh, garden, we've been able to supply him 20 grams of this oil when he came to Oregon, but he obviously needs more than that. Now he's sentenced, probably going to be sentenced to prison in Iowa. McKenzie said he used the plant's extract of cannabis oil to treat uh, painful tumors caused by angiosarcoma, a rare aggressive form of cancer. Tumors grown to the size of a grapefruit. McKenzie and his wife Loretta, who 43, had previously been prosecuted for growing marijuana used for his treatment. In 2011, they both pled guilty in Scott County, Iowa, to drug charges and were put on probation. Benton also has a drug conviction from 2000 for uh, mushrooms. He'd been diagnosed with angiosarcoma in 2011, his wife said, and chose to treat himself with cannabis oil and by drinking fresh juice from cannabis plants instead of seeking chemotherapy which he was worried would damage his heart. 
the tumor, which had been uh, the size of a golf ball, was reduced to a bump within two months after he started treating it with cannabis, McKinsey said. He continued using the oil after his 20, June 2013 arrest, but the oil is the only available sporadically, and the tumor is now the size of a grapefruit. McKinsey and his wife and son live with his parents in Eldridge, Iowa, just north of Davenport, and he admits he grew marijuana in a trailer and in an RV on the property. Law enforcement officers found 71 plants when they raided his place last year. They were slapped with felony charges, as was their son and their uh, elderly parents. So that's a, a very sad story. We'll continue to bring you up to date on developments there in Iowa. Uh, North American trade groups, uh, such as the Hemp Industry Association, has published a position paper on what it called the misbranding of cannabidiol or CBD products as hemp oil. Uh, the new statement from the HIA explains the difference between hemp oil and CBD extracts in terms of their respective uses and means of production and emphasizes the need for accurate language in the marketplace so consumers aren't misled. Again, there's cannabis extract oils that are highly psychoactive and that have CBD and THC and there is hemp seed oil, which has neither one. It has uh, essential fatty acids. So uh, be sure to uh, uh, distinguish between those two. And our final story tonight, a bar patron in Denver on Tuesday night last week offered President Obama a joint, asking him, do you want a hit of this? The president laughed and smiled, but didn't answer as he shook hands with other patrons. Matt Anton, the man who offered marijuana to the president, posted footage of Obama on his Instagram account with the caption, asked him if he wanted a hit of marijuana, and he laughed. As the president's motorcade came into Denver from the airport, someone held up a sign reading, Free Weed for Obama. After the president greeted a supporter outside the bar who was wearing a horse head mask, a Time Magazine reporter tweeted a Photoshop picture of Obama confronting an entire group of people with horse heads with the caption, the moment the President of the United States remembered Maureen Dowd's warning about the Denver cookies, end quote. The President has expressed support for allowing legalization to proceed in Colorado and Washington. He said, quote, it's important for it to go forward because it's important for society not to have a situation in which a large portion of the people have at one time or another broken a law and only a select few have been punished. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a film clip from CNN about that. So we'll be back in just a moment. You're the president of the United States. You're on the road. <coughs> Mainly you're trying to raise money, but you want to get out to play a little bit. Uh, the president went out to a bar last night. You get surprised. We all do this, right? We get surprised by somebody in a horse head. Yeah, uh, that gets surprised. The president's out on the streets here. Then he goes out. The governor of Colorado decided the president, he should have a beer. That's always good. Clink the pint glasses there. It's good for the photos. They play a little pool, right? Just a little recreation. A gorilla fist bump. If you don't talk to the guy in the horse head, you should fist bump the guy in the gorilla hat. And then, because we're in Colorado, I guess this is uh, your when in Rome moment. Listen. There we go, bro. If, if, uh, if you did not hear that, that was uh, you want a hit of this. Uh, you know, Colorado has these new laws you say, hit where there what? are certain things. Yeah, I, I we were don't actually know. playing around. We were thinking we should have a caption contest with the horse head picture. I mean, that is way <laughs> too much fun, especially the guy, being in Denver. Yeah, the gorilla and the horse head guy—they may have had a hit of that. <laughs> just, just, just guessing. If for the record, I listened closely to that several times. The president never said no. Excellent oh, really? point, John There was Berman. no response. Oh, Excellent don't, point. You know, there you go. Sorry. Gang. Berman starts another conspiracy. He's just Here speaking we go. the truth. The Huffington Post on that horse, has, horse head picture oh. put it well. In politics, there are always a few naysayers oh. around. <laughs> All right. Ah. They tried. They tried. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hey. Well, that was an interesting story from CNN. Bye. There you are. Okay. Uh, now we're going over to... John Cornett, how are you doing, John? I'm doing really good, Paul. Now I tell you, what's such bad news about those uh, airliners? And you know, I was in stitches hearing about Congress. But God bless you, Congress, for thinking. And those people, Please, when you. they get convicted in Malaysia, you know, they're executed for small amounts of marijuana. I mean, a lot of ball. times these people are just set up. You know, hey, I want to put him out of the way. Put a little pot on him. The cops will kill him for me. I got a little blues collage for you right now. All right. I'm 
growing marijuana in my yard. That was good, John. So what'd you do? Put together a couple different songs or? Yeah, I couldn't figure out what to play. I just threw together a few things I do. And that was pretty good. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> Welcome, Casper. Thank you. Welcome, Dr. Levesque. It's good to have you back on the show. Yeah, I've been on vacation for a couple of years. I guess so. I know you had some, some hip surgery or hip leg surgery. femur surgery. Well, yeah, hip, hip and femur surgery, and it didn't come out very well, and I may have to have another operation. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I'm worse sorry than that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's uh, going to be very tragic. Tragic. Yeah. That's terrible. Well, I do have to make a comment right now. Please do. After hearing your, your story about what's going on in the United States, Reefer Madness is, is well and growing in the United States. The, the New York State Medical Marijuana Bill is absolutely dreadful. And the Washington not as bad as a the, couple of the other ones. And the Washington, uh -huh. it's not the worst. The Washington D.C. is just as bad. And Illinois and, and Chicago and, oh, is oh, pretty bad. Il Illinois will Minnesota's will is bad. Ne will never get off the will never get off the ground. Yeah. Uh, they've had they've had uh, uh, marijuana stores in Washington D.C. for the past year, and the last time I heard they had 111 uh, customers. In mm -hmm. a whole year. Yeah, it doesn't but seem like they can stay open at that level. No, they well, need, uh, the whole thing it is that Washington, D.C., the city of Washington, D.C., has their own medical marijuana programs run by the civilians. And, and they, don't, they don't... Well, one of the things they do is they say the doctor who sees them has to be their primary care doctor. This is ridiculous. And so there aren't many doctors who handle primary care <laughs> who are willing <laughs> yeah, to do that in, in Washington, right. D.C. Yeah. So therefore, they hardly have 
any people who are allowed to do it. And they have very stringent rules oh, about yeah. oh, getting yeah. the marijuana. And they tell you which way you have to take it home. And if they find you outside <laughs> of that narrow way after you've bought it, then you can be still arrested <laughs> as long as you and you can only consume it in your home under Washington's <laughs> law. So it is very strange. If yep. true. And only if you're in a closet <coughs> with the light off and the kids are asleep. And the phone's off the hook. And oh, you got a bag over kids here. Be, <laughs> kids are going to be outside. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, you know, if you have a question for Dr. Levesque or Casper Leach or myself, you can call us tonight at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. Uh, do we still have a caller standing by? All right. Come on, caller. Welcome to our show. Well, hello there. Howdy. Uh, I'm looking for a job in the... Uh, a cannabis industry, preferably I want to be a trimmer, but I uh. have no connections. I have a uh, marijuana uh, card from the state of Oregon where I live, and I want to know how do I get my resume out there? <laughs> Advertise. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, I, I would recommend going to the licensed dispensaries and telling them the that you have this resume and giving them copies right. and asking them if they know someone who wants to employ you. How many I'd stories probably, are there in Portland area? Um, you know, you would ask me that. <laughs> um, I think there's about 20. There's a lot. There might be more than 20. There's more <laughs> in Portland. There's still, I don't know which ones are licensed and which ones aren't licensed. <laughs> I know they're closing them down. You know, we have a studio audience member, John, our guitarist and singer. He's what do you? What's going on, John? Well, I, did, I just got a little helpful thought here about uh, a helpful thought. Yes, good. sir. That's uh, what we need. Relative to oh, what was the question again? <laughs> where's oh, the oh, where's I the want to know. Yeah. What's the normal to for people? Or in the normal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So Oregon Normal used to have these meetings, these uh, cardholder meetings, where you go and all the growers show up there, and they find they get matched. They don't do that anymore, they though. Don't do that anymore. So oh, I think the only thing to do would be to go to those dispensaries out there where they can legally sell marijuana and tell them, look, I'm looking for a job. Here's my resume and uh, I want to be a trimmer or maybe they might have something else for you to do. And it's free to post on Craigslist. Craigslist is more than just a dating <laughs> yeah. site. I don't know if monster.com takes cannabis <laughs> industry uh, <laughs> jobs. Or, yeah, if someone in the audience mentioned Facebook. Well, well, on yeah. I'm not like your social, social media, so... Uh, I understand. Yeah, I'm an yeah. old-time hippie girl, and uh, okay. this would be the perfect job for me. I, I could... Uh, Put a flyer up in Safeway, <laughs> 10 to 1, you know, <laughs> you'll get a job. Do you want to say something? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, but that's my best bet much. is go to those dispensaries out there and pass out your resume. Thank you. All right. Well, well, Have a good one. On the computer, aren't there places where you can find where these dispensaries are? She said she wasn't computer savvy. Um, yeah. You know, doctor, but, I, I grow my own, and I give it away to people for free. Well, she Why can, would I go in those stores? She, you know, she can talk to a high school kid and find out where <laughs> all those places are. I don't think they can. <laughs> there are medical dispensaries here in Oregon, or she could go across the river to those businesses. I think there are places where they list them. I can't tell you off the top of my head, though. <laughs> be honest you're traveling too we much. have uh, a studio audience member who has a uh, question here so go right ahead it is a persistent question for me right about um, the proposed uh, um, prop 53 I wondered if uh, doctor if you have an opinion about um, uh, the the, um, the 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 ones that are, that are that we're going to get to vote on if the you, one we might if you've had a chance on. to look at it they're still like counting yeah. They're still counting those signatures, but even though there's been a lot of talk like it's definitely going to make it, I have reason to believe that it might not, but we will see. I hope it does, but wh what do you have to say about it? Have you well, the whole studied thing, that? Okay, the, the U.S. government says in Oregon there are 300,000 marijuana users. Now, only 60,000 what? Just don't look at that. Oh, hi yourself. <laughs> the U.S. government says there are 300,000 marijuana users in the state of Oregon, and 60,000 have permits, and 30,000 are caregivers, which makes I think that's a gross underestimate. Well, I, I that's what I was going to say. How did you know that? I was just, <laughs> just know that. So uh, 
the whole thing it is that that they, maybe they're 30 300,000 daily smokers of marijuana well I w whatever it is yeah something uh, but like I it, think yeah. in terms of people who I would say half of the adults out there if they don't use it now they would if it were legal well that's absolute too yeah yeah, yeah that's for sure especially when the truth comes out about its benefits you know how it stops lung cancer if you smoke marijuana well you're actually less likely to get lung cancer than someone who's never smoked marijuana at all that that kind of reminds me of something right What's that can you can somebody hold, hold i think camera two is going to close in hold, on your hold, hold you've on got this. a long list there of uh, something I'll, I'll, what is that uh, well uh, it's going to show up here that. in a minute i think they're working on it they're working on it it's, we're these, all volunteers these, here. these were the original 10 conditions for which you could get a marijuana permit. And the, the... I hope you have them memorized because I can't see them from uh, that screen. Well, I, I hope people in the, out in the boondocks can see, see this. Um, pain is the number one reason that yeah. people use marijuana. 60% of the people out there. Uh, uh, well, it's about 55%, okay. 55,000, excuse me, 55,000 use it for pain. Okay. Yeah. And the next, hey, yeah, we can damn near see that now. Easy. Yeah. And let's see, Nause, uh, nausea is down at the bottom, but uh, um, spasms, spasms is the next, spasm diseases is the next one. And uh, that that's about uh, twenty percent, and nausea is about fifteen percent. But uh, the the rest of these the rest of these are way down in uh, maybe uh, two percent or something like that. But if if you can put put on the other picture now, put on the other picture. Those were the mm. nine medical you mean conditions. That other little now, graph of papers you have yeah, over there. Well, the whole thing it is on, on the. On the other one, I have the approximately 60 conditions from Granny Storm Crow. Ah, okay. A and uh, they, well, that, this, that, that just, that ju you probably can't see that, or maybe you can't, but but it's just. Now, who is Granny Storm Crow? Is that somebody you dated or something? <laughs> what? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, Storm Granny Crow. Storm Crow has been has been collecting information about these conditions for over 20 years. All right. <coughs> and she is has an extensive list of medical studies, probably the best list out there that that's, I've seen. That, that's true. Probably but, about 150 but, uh, pages of citations. I have to make a com comment about this, that I, I checked the computer in the last two weeks, and there are a couple of uh, articles on the computer which indicate approximately 200 medical conditions. Wow. It's amazing. And osteoporosis. Oh, you know, who well, would, well who osteoporosis would have that? is painful for the Well, no, it stops the, the loss of calcium in your bones. Well, I it, it, uh, there's studies out there that are 10 years and they've been verified that cannabis stops the loss of calcium in your bones. It stops osteoporosis. Okay, ladies with osteoporosis, you just heard. There's, there's lots of Cannabis is going to be good for you. Cannabis will make you live longer. You know, I remember yeah. when I first heard Jack Harris say that, I thought, he's crazy. How can <laughs> he say that? But the fact of the matter, it does. I mean, just the fact that it lowers your level of stress is one oh, thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It well, has a lot of uh, medicinal benefits. It's, it's, cannabis is, marijuana is one of the best tranquilizers ever that too that absolutely too. i know that oil i've given you has helped you sleep has it? that's true yes that's true absolutely. through those painful nights with your surgery oh yeah that's important that's true we have uh, several callers standing by let's go ahead and take those phone calls welcome to the show caller oh hi uh, and thank you for Howdy. taking my call uh paul welcome. um i um got a new uh, caregiver and uh -huh. the product i get now has no smell to it completely uh -huh. i mean Usually, I, I've watched your show, and you, you used the saying "smell-o-vision." Yeah, and, yeah. I but, wish all right, we had smell-o-vision, so <laughs> you viewers out there could smell the the herb that we've had on the show on occasion. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but now I'm, my caregiver, the uh, the product I get has no smell to it at all, and I'm wondering, Sad. is it supposed to just dissipate or does it is it well bad? it can is dissipate it? it definitely does dissipate over time if you the closer you get it to uh harvest the better it is uh i'm not sure it, it might have to do with the conditions it's it's grown under if it's not uh treated properly or if it's been uh 
where it keefed or the resin has been extracted off of it, then uh, that takes away the smell as well. Uh, uh, have you talked to your caregiver about that? Uh, yeah, he said, well, no, it, that's normal, and <laughs> I just don't know what to say or do, you know. Um, um, my mama told me, you better shop around. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you very much. Well, also, Western Washington is the... Uh, when you cat, smoke it, does it give you the results that you're needing? Does it take care of your, your medical needs when you smoke it? I, I, I have um, glaucoma, and yes, it does, I think. I mean, it, it's been two weeks now. Well, so if it's doing what it's supposed to do, then I really wouldn't be so concerned if it stank or not. I mean... You know, chocolate tastes great. Sometimes there's no aroma to it. Sometimes there is. But what counts is what it does for the taste. That, well, yeah, when you use it, does it work? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you, you probably would know. a psychological high. I mean, because uh -huh. I'm smoking well, it, I, you know. If, it, if it's doing that, that's the main thing. Yeah, Lord, different you varieties you have different, different uh, <laughs> flavors. You know, Whoa. if you want a variety that has a real nice flavor, uh, maybe we can give you a cutting. Yeah. Well, oh. glau glau I, I grow kinds that taste and smell really good. Well, glaucoma yeah, is very painful. Well, also, and yeah, it is. It uh, very, it's very, headaches. It's very, yes, absolutely. It's extremely yeah, painful. You have and, if eye you, and, and if you're using marijuana, you it's should get pain. relief from the pain from glaucoma. That's, that's, that's true. true. That's the name and of the game. And actually, taking cannabis orally would be the best thing because it lasts longer for your glaucoma. Thank so you very much. And the um, also Western Washington is the catnip um, capital of, of the United States, so hopefully I'm not getting that. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Oh, I hope, I I hope didn't, I didn't you find next, what yeah, works best question. for you. But I, I really enjoy the flavors in cannabis myself. But uh, I do too. I look my for kinds that have really nice flavors. You know, cannabis, the cannabinols, uh, CBD, THC, they are actually flavorless and don't have an odor. So THC and CBD, CBC, it's not those things that have that odor we associate with cannabis. There are these aromatic hydrocarbons or terpenes that are common to other plants. For instance, limonene is found in lemons, citrus fruit. There's one called myrcene that's found in hops. And these different, and there are about 14 of those that are known of that are common to other plants. And so different uh, types of cannabis have different combinations of these terpenes or these aromatic hydrocarbons. And that's what's responsible for that smell. Now these terpenes also have medicinal effects. And when you combine them with different types of CBD and different uh, combinations of THC and different terpenes, it has a different effect. That's what accounts for the different effects in different varieties. And it's called the entourage effect. All of those different cannabinoids and terpenes put together have different uh, pharmacological effects. And that's why some strains work better for sleeping, while other ones might work better for pain, just so you know. Do, do you know what terpenes are? Ever You're heard, the pharmacologist. Ever, ever. <laughs> no, I've never heard of that. Ever, the, ever heard of ter turpentine? Sure. Yeah. Turpentine is terpene. There's a lot of different terpenes. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. There, yeah. there are a bunch of them that are found throughout all kinds of different oh, yeah, that's and, true. and yeah. plants. So. Yeah. All right. Well, my, thanks for your my call. Last, my last question for Dr. Levesque. Okay, go you ahead. I know you fought in World War II. Yeah. Were you ever attacked by a, a German Stuka dive bomber or a Panzer tank? Uh, I... When I crossed the Rhine River, I was strafed by two Messerschmitts, and they were followed by two, um, two, um, two American planes, and so I was, I was strafed by two German planes and two American planes within two minutes. And, and how many people that were crossing the river with you were, were killed in these actions? Um, the, the, the day... My battalion crossed the Rhine River under fire. We lost 150 men in less than one hour. And how many people are in your battalion? About 1,000. So 150 and, people and, out of 1,000 in an hour. A couple of the companies were just practically wiped out as far as their, their, their commanding or their sergeants and so forth. We, we lost more sergeants that day than we did any other time. 
But um, uh, usually it was stu your dog stu face stu stu Stukas, Stukas don't strafe. They go like this, zoom, like this. And the strange thing about it, the Stuka dive bomber was actually an American airplane. Oh, really? What? Yeah. And the American Army decided that they didn't need them, so they <laughs> sold them to the Germans. Well, before the war, I take it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is a great time to show your book. You want to show our audience your book? Dr. Levesque, uh, obviously... Hey. Marched into Germany in you're, General Patton's you're, army. You're doing great. And so here is his book. Uh, and I've sold three of them already uh, this General afternoon here. General Patton's Dog Face Soldier. Yep. And so how if somebody wants a copy of that, what do they do? Well, give me 10 bucks. Okay. <laughs> Contact us and we'll put you in touch with Dr. <laughs> Levesque. Uh, I know you had a bunch of those all typed up, and I scanned them to computers so yeah, you could start yeah, uh, yeah, printing you're, them about you're, I don't know a dozen you're, years you're, ago or something. You're, you're one of my you're one of my supporters in this book here. Are there mm -hmm. any photos of you in there with the, with your musket during the Civil War? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, you have a picture there. Go ahead and show. I, I give I give talks at the high, local high schools. See how close and, the camera and I was at uh, oh, uh, man. I was at the Milwaukee High School a couple of years ago, and some student raised his hand. He says, uh, "Sir, were you in the Civil War?" <laughs> and and I it was very very uncivil. <laughs> and, and this is how I looked the day the day we where are you that way you're looking at they're looking someplace. At this this is this is how I looked. And, and that was a term that was used in, in the 1940s, a dog face. That was an infantryman, right? A combat infantryman is a dog face. And a combat infantryman wears this badge right here. rifle. Right here. It's a, it's a musket. A musket. Ac okay. Actually a musket. And you have to survive 30 days, have to survive 30 days to get this thing and about... Uh, all right. I would say 80% of guys didn't even last 30 Well, you days. know, all of Casper and I are both uh, uh, peacetime soldiers. Yep. We weren't uh, in combat, but we salute you. And, and I was a uh, dog face. I was infantry. I went in there. I was ground troop. Yep. And I served with the Pershing Missile Site, and I hung out with in the Germany. Pershing Missiles in Germany. You and made sure that if it, we so were going to go are still there. bombs, that we got ours dropped first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They haven't left yet. They've been there, what is it, 60 years 50, now or something? Well, yeah. More than 60, almost yeah. 70 years. Yeah. 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 Well, um, anyway, we have another caller. Let's go ahead and bring that caller on. Welcome to the show, caller. Oh, not that one. They, they got tired of waiting. Um, any more Hello, callers? Paul? Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome to the show. Paul? Huh? Yes. This is Kim. How are you? I'm doing good. God, so many yeah. things have come up while I've been waiting to talk to you. Sorry. Uh, been very patient. We appreciate you. No, patience. so many things, that, so many questions I wanted to ask. We won't have enough time. No. We'll start firing first, away. We'll see what we can do. First, I want to say to Dr. Levesque, when I go to some of these conferences, the hardest thing I, is, is, is to talk to these people with PTSD. And I just don't know what to say. I can't imagine. Um, what they go through, and Dr. Levesque, you didn't happen to know Warren Brown, a sharpshooter who went over the Rhine the same time you did. You didn't know what, someone named Warren Brown? No, Warren Brown. no. Well, there were a lot of them there. Well, with a with a thousand guys just in, in your battalion. In my in my battalion, I might have known twenty people, yeah. and I was a. Point man, scout, and forward observer, and this was a group of six guys, and we 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 were the we were the point man, we were the scouts, and we were the forward observer. So, how many of you guys were captured? Or killed uh, well, out of those um, six? Uh, about three weeks from the end of the war, we were uh, we had an observation post uh, about a half a mile ahead of the lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we were on two hours and off for four. And at 12 o'clock midnight, I got off. I got off the observation post. And at 12:05, my two buddies were captured. Wow. 
and and uh, Ed Hendricks got and, out of there just in time. Ed, Ed Hendricks and Glenn Brannon were prisoners for about six weeks, and uh, they they got they got to go home on the first boat, and we met them on the French coast. Levesque, and Ed Hendricks says, uh, Levesque, would you would you have a cigarette with us before we go home? And I says, sure, what for? And he says, we thought you were queer because you didn't smoke. <laughs> and so a I, said, culture, then. I said, Ed, I thought you were queer because you did. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, but, I think if uh, you date a person of the same gender, you're queer. <laughs> But I took a couple drags off the cigarette and I carried it around in my wallet for the next two years till it completely uh, fell Dr. apart. Rebecca? And was it a joint? Was it marijuana that no, you smoked? No, no, it's tobacco. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, Dr. Levesque, this, yeah. this subject is a very difficult one for me to discuss, as I'm sure it is for you. Um, were you in the, were you in the, in the uh, group uh, that was in any enemy territory because they were ahead of the rest of everybody? Say that again. You were ahead of the rest you of the troops. You were the point well, person. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I spent more time in no man's land or behind German lines than anybody else in my battalion. Because I spoke some German and French. Really and did. French! <laughs> so they, they took advantage of his well, education. Well, uh, I, I was a college graduate in Oregon State in chemistry, and I thought that the Army could use a bright young chemist and so I volunteered, and uh, in order to be a chemist, I, I, I had to be an officer, and I couldn't be an officer because I didn't have a trigger finger. But they put but, you in the position I, to but pull I, your But I could, be an, I could be a combat infantryman. <laughs> and Sharp your trigger finger is your best friend when you're in the infantry, absolutely. Yes, sir. But this is, my, this is my trigger finger, no, no, no. No insult to anybody out there, but this is <laughs> right. my tri this is my trigger finger. You felt right. Congress at right. <laughs> that, this is what you fought with when you were in the war, right? <laughs> you know, we're down to about 15 minutes. You got another question? Yeah. Uh, well, gosh, I had a couple, but Dr. Levesque, let me uh, mention this to you. And have you do you know if it's working? I gave my sister-in-law uh, five grams of uh, concentrate mixed uh, emulsified in mineral oil, uh, glycerin rather, and she for this topical solution, and she's using it for her psoriasis on her head. And she says it works great. Now, I never heard of that one, but I thought I knew most of them. I've definitely heard of, of uh, uh, high cannabinoid extracts being used for psoriasis and that it works. Yeah, it worked really, really well for her. And as far as the other things I was going to talk to you about, I'll give some other people some time. I was hoping to talk about the smell and that kind of thing. But thank you very much, and thanks, everybody, for doing all your hard work. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. You we have a little film clip we're going to roll, and we'll be back in just a moment after this film clip. So uh, please stay tuned. I don't know if Hillary Clinton saw your documentaries on weed, Dr. Gupta, <laughs> but uh, you, know, you, you famously changed your mind on this. Tell me why there are real benefits to this stuff. Well, first of all, you know, I also agree that m more research needs to be done. I think everybody agrees with that, although it's very difficult to do in this country, and I'm happy to talk about that. But, but let me remind you, Brooke, that, that marijuana has been used as a medication, was used as a medication for a couple thousand years, even in the United States up until 1943. It was part of the formulary from which doctors would prescribe medications. It was there. And there was research at that time to support its use. Even now, we have certain medications, uh, something known as Marinol, which is a marijuana-based medication, which is available in the United States. Uh, another med medication known as Sativix uh, for patients with MS is available in 20 countries around the world. So th there's a lot of research that's already gone into many of these things, although much of it admittedly not happening in the United States. Uh, we talked a Why lot not? about the use of marijuana for epilepsy, for example, and uh, you know, seeing some of these children who have responded to the, to the use of a medicinal marijuana when other drugs didn't work was quite astounding, and I think that stimulated more research. I, let me tell you, the reason why not, Brooke, is, is, is sort of as fascinating medically as it is uh, socially. It is a Schedule One substance. And what that means, just, just wrap your mind around this, what that means is that it is categorized as something that is among the most harmful substances 
and also has no medicinal use. It's preordained as having no medicinal use. So you can imagine a researcher who says, look, I want to study this. I want to get funding to study this. I want to go to the various agencies to get approvals to study this. And the answer comes back, well, look, it's Schedule 1. It doesn't have any medical use. That's not going to be a very fruitful laboratory experiment for you. So it's just very difficult in the United States to do these types of studies. So I, you know, I agree with, with, uh, with Secretary Clinton when she says that it, it, more research is necessary. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem, though, is that it's just so challenging in this country at this time. Can you just remind me before I let you go, what was the number one reason why you changed your mind? I, you know, look, when, when you look at the United States research, it, what I think you see ultimately is a pretty distorted picture. Most of the studies aren't actually looking for benefit, they're looking for harm. They're not getting the approval to study that benefit. For me, it's when I started looking outside the country, when I started looking at laboratories that were not dependent on federal funding, when I started listening uh, to this chorus of patients who I had previously dismissed as malingerers and people who just wanted to get high, and I realized that they, in fact, not only were getting benefit from this, but oftentimes getting benefit when nothing else had worked, that started to change my mind, hmm. but then it also prompted an 18-month journey around the world to go see these things for myself. And now I believe that I think it can have real benefit to people, and sometimes it can be beneficial when nothing else has worked, and it's, it's, it's improper to, to withhold it as a result. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think Secretary Clinton said the same thing. In certain situations, it may have real merit. Yeah. All right, well, there's Sanjay Gupta on CNN. Another CNN clip will lift. You know, Dr. Levesque, uh, I had a chance to actually change Gupta's mind there. You know, he had actually written an article in Time Magazine about three months before I appeared on Anderson Cooper 360 show called Why I'll Vote No on Medical yeah, Marijuana. Yeah. So I gave him a whole bunch of studies <laughs> and I told Joe Johns and Anderson <coughs> Cooper I wanted to debate Gupta. <coughs> and uh, I didn't get a chance to debate him, but in the segment, it was about a 12-minute segment on CNN across a commercial break that uh, uh, I appeared and then he came on right after me and changed his mind at that point. Of course, I never dreamed he would become <laughs> an advocate to the level he has become with two television shows and standing up for medical marijuana. But, you know, I was on that Anderson Cooper show, but the very first time I ever saw Anderson Cooper on CNN in 2002, you were like his very first guest. That's right, that's right. And, and th this was really strange because the actually the uh, Oregon Medical Board was on my butt about that time. Yeah, I remember. That's why and, and, he was questioning uh, you. Yeah, that, that's right. And and so he says, uh, Doctor Levesque, how many prescriptions for marijuana have you written? I says, there is no prescriptions for marijuana. He said, well, the New York Times says there is. <laughs> yeah. I says. Well, this is the first time the New York Times has been wrong. Well, no, it is. I mean, you're lucky if they get 70% of it right, actually. I mean, you know, they said Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy, too. But that's they did? Story. They did. They did. Anyway. Well, I thought he did. That's another topic. Now, a lot of that's because they said it, but no. It was uh, President they Johnson the, they said the Beatles and J. Edgar were just Hoover that killed Kennedy. <laughs> and they said the Beatles were just a fad. That, too. That, too. And they smoke, all of them smoke marijuana, too. Uh -huh. That bunch. Yeah. So uh, uh, we have a little video we're going to run uh, from the Netherlands. It's, uh, there's a company there run by the folks from Cincy Seed and the Amsterdam and Barcelona Hemp Museum. Uh, they have a company called Hemp Flax. And here's a little video called Nature Wins.
Yeah, so Hemp Flax is a Dutch company run by, it was started by Ben Dronkers. Ben Dronkers uh, started another company, Cincy Seeds, selling cannabis varieties. He teamed up with uh, uh, Flying Dutchman Seeds. He started that first and then it became Cincy Seeds and he's opened the Hemp Museum in Amsterdam and in Barcelona. And he has this huge uh, uh, hemp company, Hemp Flax. It's, here's another little video clip about another minute talking about that. Hemp Flax focuses on the production and processing of sustainable resources, semi-finished and finished products made from ecological grown fiber hemp and flax. Hemp Flax was founded in 1993. It is their mission to serve humankind and the environment by providing affordable, modern, natural hemp products for a sustainable future. Hemp products are used for small animals, agriculture and horticulture, the industry and the equestrian sector. A number of products which Hemp Flax offers are leather oil, bedding and isolation material. Mercedes and BMW also use the fiber in its pressed form for manufacturing car parts. Well, there's hemp flax, one of the largest producer of hemp fiber in the world today. And we got to thank Ben Drockers for uh, helping develop our cannabis plant for all its various uses. And, and you've got to see his museum in Barcelona and Amsterdam. They're just incredible if you ever get a chance to. We have another phone call, about four minutes left. We'll take that last call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, Paul. This is Kim again. Maybe I can get in my original question that I was going to ask about. Okay. Legislator Bonamici. I've been I've written her a couple of times, and I'm trying to figure out what her stance is. I've asked to make an appointment to go talk to her, and wondered if you had any insight Who is that? on the woman. Who? Bonamici. Oh, I I can't tell you much about her. She's not my rep. I know, you know, Earl Blumenauer has really stood up for us quite well. Oh, I think yeah, she's positive on hemp as well, but I really, uh, I can't say that authoritatively. And I was just trying to get Bonamici to see what I, you know, I told her she needs to learn about the industrial part. Indeed, indeed. And then we had that story at the top of the hour, how Courtney Moran, a local lawyer, has this fellow Rutherford who's trying to grow it out in Dufer. Am I selling that right? Yeah, Dufer. that's right. Yeah, and so... Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, they'll be able to do that. Okay, well, good luck with Bonamici, Representative Bonamici. I think she's supportive. I, I think, think she so. is as well. Yeah. I think she is as well. Well, Casper, you've been very quiet here. Would you like to say something here? we got about two and a half minutes. I want to encourage people to go to timeforhemp.com. We are growing Mutt Sticky started his program this week. Every Tuesday and Thursday, lots of music, lots of laughter, skits, and fun. And Joe Grabine kicks his show off on Monday next week. And uh, the Japanese programming is now every other week. Once a week we get that going on. And uh, so it's rather exciting to watch this network grow and grow and grow. Timeforhemp.com. We are like your favorite joint best when <laughs> shared with friends. Oh, that's The precious. doctor, anything you want to say? we got to hope that... Uh, you're well, not, uh, got some I, to I was there. I was on this program for my 90th birthday, which was 18 months ago. Years ago? Uh, uh, one, well, hey, one year ago. Oh, one okay. year ago. One and a half. And for those who haven't uh, who haven't tuned it in, it's it's called the coolest 90 year old on earth. And I have some of my business. Oh, that's card. on uh, Google. Yeah, uh, just yeah, type in yeah. The you can, you can Google that. Year old so Earth and they'll find I, I've got your a 90th birthday party. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got I've got a bunch that's of these, cool. and anybody that wants one of my cards, so that's well, we this actually you can Google me, and you can find over a hundred articles by me on on Google. 
And you're still and producing media and articles for Salem uh, Days Salem Dash Say News. Salem Days News. Bonnie King there. Yeah. Yeah, That's very good. Great. We'll keep it up, doctor. Yeah. We look, hope to have you back soon and hope you don't have to have that surgery. Well, if you I need hope, it. I hope so, but then who knows? Hopefully it will pass soon. Yeah. Well, find yourself a doctor who will prescribe for you <laughs> medical marijuana for your pain. I, I, I give I you have, that, right? I have, so I have one. <laughs> um, we want to thank you folks for watching. We're going to go out on another great song with Mr. John Cornett. Go to our website at hemp.org and help us restore hemp. Yay. Good night. <laughs>